Welcome to Fashion Through History, brought to you by English Heritage. I am Dr. Serena Dyer and I am a fashion historian. And today I'm here at Osborne on the beautiful Isle of Wight. Osborne was Victoria's seaside residence and Queen Victoria was Queen of England from 1837 until 1901. You might be familiar with her mourning fashions, which really defined her reign, but her interest in fashion was much wider than that. We'll also be talking to English heritage curator, Samantha Stone, who will tell us some more about this incredible property while we look at some of the most iconic looks from Victoria's reign. This was a really fashionable gown in the 1830s when Queen Victoria came to the throne. It's a really dramatic style with the massive sleeves and the bell skirt and it would have been set off with a huge bonnet. But before we go into more detail, maybe you can tell us how Victoria came to the throne. Of course, Victoria knew from quite a young age that she was likely to become queen as none of her uncles had had a legitimate heir. She became queen at the age of 18, but she was of course a single woman at that point. That wasn't going to last for long. Victoria and Albert had met in 1836 and they met again for the second time in October 1839. Five days later, Victoria proposed and within four months they were married. So how did the public perceive the wedding? The wedding was certainly a national event of great importance and interest and news was spread across the world. And of course, the dress was centre stage. And Queen Victoria even gave us an account of it in her journal. And she describes it as a white satin gown with a very deep flounce of Honiton lace, imitation of old. And the dress really, I think, catches the essence of this change in fashion that we're seeing between the dramatic proportions of the 1830s to the softer silhouettes of the 1840s that really mimic Victoria's own interest in domestic family life. So we see the shoulders sloping down and we see these skirts which are supported by layers and layers of petticoats, including one which is corded and which is heavily starched to get that shape. Can you tell us a little bit more about the general public's attitude towards Queen Victoria? Victoria was something of a breath of fresh air. Firstly, she was a young woman. The monarchs before her, her uncles, were older, of course, and were infamous for their affairs and illegitimate children. Victoria used photography via the press to manage her image. To the people, she was the queen, but she was also presented as a good mother and wife and someone who was very hard working and understood the interests and emotions of her people. In some ways, this made her very relatable to the middle class. And speaking of relatable practical fashion, our next look really embodies that. Emma Jane is going to be wearing a cotton organdy dress, which was the height of fashion in the 1850s. She's already wearing her chemise, her corset and her crinoline. And the crinoline is the key difference from the 1830s dress, because instead of all of those layers of starched petticoats, we now have this amazing innovation of the cage. So this would have made it far easier for Victoria to move around and enjoy the grounds here at Osborne. She'd be able to go for picnics, she'd be able to go to the beach and it'd be very comfy. Let's get you dressed in the rest of the outfit. So the first thing to put on is the petticoat. So this is going to go over your head. So instead of those layers of petticoats that we saw with the 1830s version, we just have a single lightweight cotton petticoat. And what that does is it just smooths out the lines of the crinoline so you get a nice soft bell shape. And then of course we have the dress. So this is a very simple one piece dress and you can put it on over your head, dive into it. Queen Victoria would have had maids to help her get dressed. Of course, you just have Sam and I. But you could feasibly get dressed in something like this by yourself. It is a very practical, everyday dress for the kinds of activities that Victoria would have been doing here at Osborne. And it very simply just hooks up the front. 
and there you go. How does the fabric feel? It's a little stiffer than the cotton I'm used to, but it's lightweight, like a normal summer dress. But of course, we mustn't forget your shoes. These are very practical leather boots that would have been perfect for the kinds of activities that Victoria was getting up to here at Osborne. The final touch for your outfit is the bonnet. This will keep you nicely protected from the bright sun today. There we go. So now you're all ready to explore the rest of the grounds here at Osborne. that Osborne was a real retreat for Victoria and her family. So why did she enjoy coming here so much? Osborne was designed by the royal couple to be a private, comfortable home for them and their family. In reality, they could never escape court life and the business of state, but it was the closest thing they had to a relaxing family home. They enjoyed the estate while they were here, particularly playing in the gardens and down on the beach. The children would even cook dinner for their parents in the miniature kitchen in the purpose-built Swiss cottage. And Victoria took a real interest in her children's clothing as well as her own, didn't she? Yes, and Prince Bertie became an unwitting trendsetter as a result. Victoria dressed him in a sailor suit for his father's birthday, and it was such a success that the family commissioned a portrait and also purchased similar outfits for the rest of the royal children. The sailor suit has actually become something of an iconic royal trend, and we saw this in Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee recently, when her great-grandson, Prince Louis, wore a very similar outfit to that worn by Bertie. It was a shame that that really happy family time had to come to an end. Yes, that's right. In March of 1861, Queen Victoria's mother sadly died. And then tragically, Albert also died in December of the same year. This started an intense period of mourning for Queen Victoria that in some ways lasted for the rest of her life. And our next look is going to reflect that really sad, mournful period in Victoria's life. Queen Victoria wore black for the rest of her life. And this really connects to the stages of mourning which were popularised during the 19th century. So first mourning, which is what Queen Victoria wears, is when you wear deep, dull black colours, sometimes adorned with some beading, which is what we often see on Victoria's dresses. This would be followed by half mourning, which was usually greys and lilacs, and the time period of that could depend upon the particular individual. What we see here is a dress from that time period, and we can really see how a single colour dress can be made interesting and brought to life through different textures, through different treatments of the fabric and the trims. So here we see the shimmer of the taffeta next to the luster of the velvet, and then of course those deep black jet buttons, which became so popular for 19th century mourning. And then at the hem, we have this pleated trim and the ruching down the front. And then, of course, we have the bustle, which is the iconic feature of late 19th century fashion. But how did the public perceive Victoria during this part of her life? The grief of losing Prince Albert meant that Queen Victoria was not seen in public for many years. In 1866, Queen Victoria made her first noteworthy public appearance at the state opening of Parliament. But by this time, Princess Alexandra, her daughter-in-law, had actually become a figure of fashion herself, 
taking inspiration from trends in Paris. Queen Victoria may not have been an avant-garde leader of fashion, but she really showed how clothing could be used to craft a public image. From her wedding dress to her mourning period, she really used clothing to reach the hearts and minds of her people. So if you'd like to learn more about Queen Victoria and family life here at Osborne, then please go to the English Heritage website.